Dear friends and partners in development, once again we are being deprived of the opportunity to share each other's views and assessments in real life. But if we make the most of the opportunities we can grasp, we will soon be able to meet again too. While Malawi and others are seeing their second wave of COVID fading, others are going through the worst parts of this pandemic. What we all have in common, like Dr. Tedros of the WHO has described it, is that the fire is far from out. If we stop fighting it, on any front, it will come roaring back. And we must fight it together, because it is right and because it is the only way the fire will ever stop, be it in Guinea or Germany. We must fight the virus and we must fight all the problems we were fighting before the pandemic struck. We must fight hunger, drought, illiteracy and ignorance. We must stand up against war and modern slavery and we must combat climate change. We must combat the consequences of climate change. We must fight Ebola, which once again has erupted in Guinea and the Democratic Republic of Congo. We must do what we can together to eradicate extreme poverty and reach the other sustainable development goals. The pandemic has um, rendered the achievements of all these goals more difficult. But once again, if we grasp all the opportunities we can grasp, our goals will be within grasp too. Right now, there can be no higher priority than access to vaccines vaccines for all. And that is why Norway is co-chairing the Facilitation Council of the ACT Accelerator together with South Africa in order to mobilize support to develop, produce and make COVID-19 vaccines treatment and test available globally. It is urgent that the scientific progress made in development of new vaccines is followed by efforts to promote equitable access reaching people and health systems all over the world. The vaccine pillar COVAX has agreements in place to access 2 billion doses of several promising vaccine candidates. Within the next few weeks, we expect the first COVAX vaccine doses to be unloaded from the plane at the airport and then administrated to high-risk populations and healthcare workers, including in low-income countries. Ensuring rapid and equitable rollout of vaccines globally is essential for saving lives and livelihoods alike. For saving health systems and jobs, for stabilizing economies. All countries must step up to finance the $27 billion missing to fund the ACT Accelerator. This makes up only 0.25% of all the stimulus packages that have been put in place in order to save economies. 0.25%. But the greatest possible stimulus of them all is if we manage to fully fund ACT Accelerator and COVAX. Norway has contributed $500 million. For ethical reasons and because it is the smart thing to do. COVID-19 has also affected poverty-reducing tools like education, human rights and gender equality. Like other countries, Norway has had to make hard priorities. But we maintain development cooperation spending at 1% of GDP, with health and education as long-term priorities. The consequences of climate change are hitting the least of our countries the hardest. And that is why Norway has made climate adaptation, prevention and fighting hunger a priority in our international cooperation. We are actively engaged in the preparations of the UN Food System Summit in September. And Norway is ready to collaborate with you on food systems for the summit and beyond. Access to sustainable and reliable energy services is crucial for er eradicating poverty and it is also good for our health and our climate. Norway is also co-leader of the Alliance for Digital Public Goods. If we can transform the digital divide into a digital bridge, there will be no limit to what those can do who are now deprived 
of opportunities to study, work, shop and create jobs. I would like to highlight digital ID as a vehicle for accessing social services. The Norwegian Global Digital Library is in use in countries like Ethiopia, Guinea, Gambia, Bangladesh, Rwanda, Mozambique and Uganda. We work closely with the World Bank Group, including IFC and the regional development banks to promote private sector development and job creation in low-income countries. Securing decent jobs for women and youth is more important than ever. Robust donor contributions to IDA and the African Development Fund are particularly important. We continue to support the African Development Bank's Job for Youth in Africa. And I look forward to cooperating with African leaders on how we can even further support local efforts for creating sustainable jobs. The Norwegian Development Finance Institution, Norfund, has invested 60% of its capital in Sub-Saharan Africa, not least in equity and renewable energy. Norfund has taken concrete contra-cyclical actions in order to keep the wheels going for small businesses in Africa throughout the pandemic. And Norway has also supported different debt moratoria that have come in place as a result of the way the pandemic has added severity to already severe debt problems. However, payments of suspension only offer breathing spaces. We need to look at the different circumstances and different needs in each country. And I think we may have to go beyond um, mere payments suspensions as well. The Paris Club is in the process of planning further steps in debt restructuring for countries in immediate debt distress. We do not expect sweeping debt forgiveness as under the HIPAC initiative. Rather, we expect the new plan to include a more targeted approach, focusing on countries in debt and unsustainable debt distress. In this regard, Norway will stress the need for new principles and guidelines on responsible borrowing and lending. We need strengthened global solidarity and cooperation in order to promote financial integrity, transparency and accountability for sustainable development. All we do in our development policy is aim toward one goal, increasing our partners' ability to create their own growth, to mobilize resources for sustainable development, in this regard, upholding human rights and stopping illicit flows from corruption and tax evasion can also be seen as poverty reducing tools and equally important as education and renewable energy. So let's grasp the opportunities, let's fight the pandemic and let's eradicate extreme poverty once and for all. Thank you so much.